Welcome to another video. This is another fun system of equations and this is the guy we'll be looking for. As described in the question, so x, y, and z are all numbers that are greater than 1 and we're going to find log y base x and it's essential that all of the answers we get are greater than 1 because the base of a logarithmic function must be greater than 1. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's get into the video. Now, I found this one relatively easy because I was able to know what to do as soon as I saw it because there was a suspect and the suspect was 2 because this is just a root of this and this is a root of this so I knew that I had to express things in terms of powers of 2 so if I rewrote this number these numbers here and I said hey why don't we write this as 2 to the first power write this as 2 to the second power and this is 2 to the third power somehow it has some analogical representation to the left hand side it's something raised to a power I know it didn't it didn't work out the way I was planning it would work so but there's something every time you have expressions like this you could start thinking what if I take the log of both sides the question is am I using natural log or am I using base 10 well I figured using either of those would not help you, would not speed things up. What would speed things up is if you actually use log base 2 because then you don't have to deal with an extra number. So let's take the log to base 2 of everything that we see and see what it looks like. Okay, so if we take the log to base 2 of this side, we're going to end up with log of z base y times log of x base 2. So this comes down and we take the log of this side, okay? And that means we're going to be taking log to base 2 of 2. Well, our answer is going to be 1. We don't need to waste time on that. Let's go here. If we take the log of this, this is going to come down and you have log y base 2 here. So this is going to be log of x base z log base 2 of y and you get the answer. If you take log to base 2 of this expression, you're going to end up with just 2. Okay, and similarly, we're going to end up with log, um, where is it? The exponent log base x, y. Then we have log base 2 of z will be equal to, this is going to be equal to 3. Now you're going to ask me, how does this make things easier? Well, at least we're no longer dealing with exponent a log expression that is an exponent. Yeah, that's crazy. So now we're having products. And when you're dealing with logarithms, products are easy to deal with. However, there is no possible manipulation. Let's start from the top one. There's no possible manipulation between this and this because the bases are different. But we can make all the bases the same so that we can write this in terms of base as log base 2, log base 2, log base 2. We already have log base 2 here, and we just have a common family of expressions. So everything will now be in base 2. And that makes life very easy, because we're going to go here and say that we can do change of base. So this becomes log z in base 2 over log y in base 2. So we have log z base 2 divided by log y base 2 multiplied by log x base 2 times log x base 2 is equal to, this is still 1. Remember, we haven't changed anything in what we're doing. Nothing has changed. Okay, so we, repeat, we do the same thing here. We're going to have log x base 2, so base 2, and the answer is 3. So how does this help us? It does, because look at this one and this one. Should we be doing subtraction now? Just look at it. Should we do subtraction? 
By the way, this is not when you apply the laws of logarithms and say, hey, division can become subtraction. No, no, no. Division of logs does not become subtraction. It is a subtraction of logs that becomes the division of the arguments. Okay, so don't forget that. We can't apply that here. But one thing we can do, because these are all multiplications, we can actually look at what would happen if we divide or if we multiply. Look. You have log z in the denominator here, and you got log z not in the denominator here, which means if you multiply this by this, this guy is going to cancel this, and uh, yeah, that's the only cancellation we're going to have. Oh, this log x here, this is going to cancel this, so what you have left in this multiplication is just log y times log y. And you're going to be multiplying these two. So, let's call this equation 1. Equation 2. Equation 3. Multiplying equation 1 by 2. If you multiply these two equations, uh, okay, I'm going to write it out here. See what happens. If you multiply this by this, you're going to have log y base 2. So notice what happens. This is going to cancel this. This is going to cancel this. And this is all you have left. We're going to have log x base 2 squared, which is the product of these two. Let's put it in parentheses. And it's going to be equal to this times this. This times this is going to be equal to 2. And immediately, I can even find x. This implies that log x base 2 is the square root of 2. This is going to be, so that means log x base 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. Okay, one question I have, is it possible for log x base 2 to be negative? But we said x is greater than 1, so that means that we can't have the negative option. I'm going to take it out. That's it. So we found log x base 2, and we can find x. But you see, the question did not ask us to find x. We're looking for log y base x. So what we can do is repeat the same thing we just did here. We're going to say um, that if we multiply equation 2 by 3, see what's going to, I'm not going to write that. So if we multiply these two together, we know that this is under, it's going to cancel this out. We know that this is on top, it's going to cancel this one under, and these two are on top, so we're going to get the square of that just like this. We're going to get log y base 2 squared will be equal to the product of these two, which is 6. And that implies that log y, log y is going to be equal to log y base 2 is equal to, it's just going to be 6, square root of 6. I was thinking it was going to take longer, but we're done. Okay, so, so now we know that log y base x is equal to log y base 2 over log x base 2, which are the two answers we already just obtained. So it's going to be this one divided by this one. So it's going to be equal to square root of 6 over square root of 2, which is equal to the square root of 6 over 2, which is the square root of 3. That is log y base x. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.